Well, as experts like Rick Davis track Hurricane Milton and work to keep the public informed, they've run into a wave of misinformation surrounding natural disasters and the government's response. Many of the fake claims polluting social media stem from comments made by high-profile political leaders. Government response agencies like FEMA say it's having a dangerous impact on their outreach efforts. Senior correspondent Brenda Flanagan dug in to the misinformation and what's being done to combat it. It's just not feasible to move a hurricane or position a hurricane. It doesn't happen. Jersey meteorologist Joe Martucci points in frustration to a flood of wild social media posts about hurricanes Helene and Milton, category five level conspiracy theories surging on X, Facebook and TikTok, including is the U.S. government controlling Hurricane Milton and when FEMA comes in, it's to take the land. Self-styled whistleblowers claim. While the climate change we need to be worried about is man-made climate engineering. The amount of power that a major hurricane possesses would power half the world for a day. We don't have that kind of energy output to manipulate that. So it's just not true. Martucci's math is solid, but as Milton looms and FEMA rushes to address catastrophic damage in Hurricane Helene's wake, the agency's chief, Deanne Criswells, call the swirl of conspiracies not just demoralizing, but truly dangerous. It's absolutely the worst I have ever seen, creating distrust in the federal government. I've been doing disaster relief related work for nearly 20 years. I have never seen this volume of misinformation. Disaster yeah. response yeah. expert yeah. Samantha Montano yeah. says it's eroding rescue efforts. Responders are having to focus on addressing the, these rumors and this misinformation instead of actually being out on the ground helping people, right? So it is hampering the response in a number of ways. You know, it's just frustrating to the weather community, emergency management officials, who are all working to protect you. What the really disheartening and potentially life-threatening thing here is, is that partisanship can really get in the way of people's safety and the ability to actually get things done and help people recover. Eagleton's Ashley Conning recalls the infamous bro hug between President Obama and Governor Christie, who blamed fellow Republicans for slow walking federal aid after Superstorm Sandy. But that was before social media's rapid intensification, so says bad. political scientist yeah. Kyle Morgan. I remember Sandy growing up in New Jersey, right? And I remember seeing it kind of the fake news then were right like pictures of sharks in the subway and right like kind of weirdly photoshopped photos that are kind of harmless right morgan says it's not harmless anymore the rutgers eagleton researcher who also teaches in south carolina joined colleagues to caravan aid to helene survivors he found the area around Asheville devastated with political disinformation rampant laced with false rhetoric this puts people's lives in danger uh, people are going to die because they believe that fema is going to come and take their land or something if they do leave and they're not there to defend it in some way and so it's really dangerous and it's spreading so fast on social media. After Helene made landfall, Georgia Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene posted of the government, yes, they can control the weather, and showed maps where the hurricane wreaked havoc on a track through red states, battlegrounds in the presidential election. Obviously, that could potentially sway something with voters there if they don't see recovery efforts progressing. This could possibly all have electoral implications come a couple weeks from now, and especially in the most critical states for both of these candidates. A couple of thousand votes can swing them in one direction or the other. So you cannot dismiss any conspiracy theory. You cannot dismiss any misinformation. Um, everything's got to be batted back. It's got to be batted back quickly um, to prevent the spread of the misinformation. You know, Riders I, Micah Rasmussen I, I, says FEMA posted corrections, but that's no match for social media giants like Donald Trump, who falsely posted Harris and Biden are giving almost all of the FEMA money to illegal migrants. And it's echoed by Republicans like Jersey's U.S. Senate candidate. FEMA doesn't even have the money to take care of people in North Carolina and Tennessee because because we've diverted money to the border crisis. 
It's just something that New Jerseyans are so upset about. FEMA reports its disaster relief aid has not been diverted. Still, the agency's an easy target. It's often the first government contact with traumatized storm victims and prone to blunders. But one researcher reported a disturbing trend. 33 debunked claims about FEMA scored 160 million views as of October 7th. Montano says FEMA needs to fight back. We are not doing enough in the field to be proactive at figuring out how to handle this. Um, and it's a really complicated issue, right? But I think we need to do more to acknowledge that politics is directly affecting how these response manifest. And that's a really difficult thing for emergency managers to navigate, but we've got to start learning how to do that better. Montana hopes for a post-Milton reckoning as social media influencers strive to alter the nation's political climate. I'm Brenda Flanagan, NJ Spotlight News.